Hey guys, this is just a remake of our video on multiplication properties. I know that we already have a video on this, but I felt like in our last video we sort of rushed through everything and I wasn't able to explain to you thoroughly about every property of multiplication. So this video is just a little remake just to go through each and every, um, each and every property thoroughly and tell you each and every one of those details that I missed. So the first property of multiplication is the commutative property. So that's the commutative, sorry, it's taking me a long time to write this, commutative property. Um, the commutative property is pretty much reverse operations. So let's say you have 4 times 6. In the commutative property, you can switch this around. So you can either write it as 4 times 6, or you can write this as 6 times 4. Either way, it does not matter. So because you'll still get the same product of 24. Now let's just try another example out so that you can understand this better. Let's say, let's use bigger numbers this time. Let's say we have 3,167 times 5,024, let's say that. In the commutative property, you can still switch those numbers around no matter what their value is. Because in multiplication, that's a fact that does not matter unless it's order of operations, like the way you multiply them, you'll still get the same product because it's multiplication. So that's the commutative property. Now, second property of multiplication is the associative property. So that's the associative property. In the associative property, you have three numbers. Two of them are in parentheses. Now, it's pretty much like the commutative property, but commutative property does not handle parentheses. So in associative, let's say we have 2 times 6 times 2 again. Um, and let's say that 2 and 6 are in parentheses. Now you have to keep this in mind that any numbers that are in parentheses have to be solved first because that's something that you learn when um, you learn order of operations in PEMDAS. I'm not going to go over that right now, but we will in further videos that you have to always solve the parentheses first. So if it's two and six are in parentheses, you can't just go ahead and do six times two over here, even though I know these are the same thing. So you know what, for now, let's just change this two to three so that it's gonna be more easier to understand. So you can't just do six times three. You have to do two times six first, which will equal 12 times three, you'll get your answer of 36, your product of 36. Now, let's say in the associative property, what you can do is, you can also put the parentheses in 6 times 3. So let's say we put them here. You will still get the same product because 6 times 3 is 18, and three, 2 times 18 always equals 36. But the, first, the thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you're put, placing the parentheses, you can't just have them. So let's, the problem was 2 times 6 times 3, right? You can't just, if you want to, you just say like, okay, you know what, I'm going to place parentheses by 2 and 3. You can't just go like that. Because then pretty much you're putting the whole equation in the parentheses. That's wrong. Don't do that. You can only put in two um, numbers and they have to be together. So 6 and 3 or 2 and 6. That's how you can put them. So that's pretty much the associative property. And I hope you guys understood that. Um, the third property is identity property. The identity property has to deal with ones because in the identity property, any number that you multiply by one will always equal that number. So let's say we have a big number like maybe one million. Well, that's a very big number. Now we're just going to multiply that by one. Now the first thing that comes in my mind when I think of such big numbers is that the product has to be big. I mean, it can't be smaller, right? Because you're multiplying it. You're increasing its value. But whenever you multiply it by one, the value always equals the same thing. The product is always the same number. So 1 million times 1 will always equal 1 million. So let's say we have another smaller number, maybe like 43 times 1. It will still equal 43. So that's the identity property of multiplication. And I think this is like one of the easiest ones. And like the easiest, the most easiest is the last property, which is the zero property of multiplication. Now the zero property Anything you multiply by zero, the answer is always going to be zero. So even if you still have one million, let's say, and that's such a big number, and you're multiplying it by zero, guess what? The answer is going to be zero. Even if you have, like, I don't even know how to say this number, but let's say, um, like that. 
that's like a very big number, like three, six, seven, eight, and six zeros over there. I really don't know how to say this number. And you multiply that by zero, you're still gonna get zero. No matter what this number is, how much value it holds, your product is always gonna equal zero. So I think that's like the easiest property. So even if you have a very big number in there and you see that it says times zero, it should be coming in your head that, okay, you know what, this answer is gonna be zero, I know that. So that's pretty much the properties of multiplication. And I hope that you guys understood this better. And if you want to still find out more, you can always visit our website. And we will see you guys next time.